Hey, hello. This is the video you didn't know you were waiting for. You see, I did already design our study in the past, but these videos are really old. And if you use an old ladybug version, then they're still valid. And for sure you would, you can figure out how it works in a later version. Nevertheless, the most of you moved on and installed the latest version. And I know there is pollinator and we will look at that at some point. But part of my ultimate ladybug course we will jump into the sun hour analysis and it will be the first time where we actually use our model. Super excited. Just so you know what we're talking about, we're gonna rebuild this. This is the first start of a study. Don't worry, these buildings are not set in stone. This is just to show how it works. Although I will talk a bit about design as well. But before that, we need to acknowledge our new members. Yay, hey, hello, two new members. So we have 20 days ago, Mintesaurus. Mintesaurus. Yeah, Mintesaurus. Mintesaurus, I don't know what he does, but in his playlist, he has beautiful women singing along with a beautiful piano music. Mintesaurus. Thanks for joining. Thanks for supporting the channel. Absolute pleasure. Let me know if you need anything. Just drop me a line. And 20 days ago, the youngest joiner. Um, member, sorry, Emad Adli. Emad also has a channel and actually has two videos on it. A bit older, by the way, a subscribed, so you have now two subscribers. Um, but I guess I'm pretty sure Emad is an architect and he has some show reels. Again, also for you, thanks a lot. Thanks for joining. Thanks for supporting the channel. If there's anything I can help you with, just let me know and drop me a line. And now, as we're already here, I think uh, I need to also acknowledge uh, some other people here, especially Rafaela F. Gerretta, an unbelievable 14 months. And I'm very sorry I forgot the, the, the annual um, anniversary. But yeah, he's supporting my channel since 14, year, 14 months which is absolutely amazing. What can I say? Um, basically, he's sponsoring several videos already. And uh, others, uh, of course, so we have here David Semenison, seven months, I think he rejoined. Uh, RR, some people changing their YouTube name, so I'm not, <laughs> I don't know anymore who is RR, but six months, Lavo, we have five months, Scott Northcutt with four months, Edwin Gonzalez Meza, four months as well. Jana Tip V, four months. Architect Nazar, three months. Minimalev, five months. Guys, thanks a lot. Thanks for the support. You, you really, this helps a lot to actually keep this, this channel alive. And if you have any suggestion of what I can do better, I'm always up for it. So one thing I can tell you already, I am thinking of starting a general grasshopper course because I can see that a lot of the videos I'm creating people with with re relatively little knowledge of grasshopper want to actually start with ladybug but it needs some foundation and I think that's something I want to provide it's still not enough there's still not enough um, tutorials out there nevertheless let's jump in our sun hour study um, so that's what we're aiming for and I will just go here and delete everything. No, I will not delete it. But this is the portion of script we're going to build today. I'll just copy this and all right. OK, so I'm just put this here on the side. So what is the sun hour study? So first of all, in the last video, we looked at the different sky matrix matrices, benefit sky matrix, the cum cumulative sky matrix. And then we looked at the sky dome, sky sun path. Not sure if we looked at the sun path. We definitely will need the sun path today. So that's why I don't need to mention it. We will use it anyway. And then we also looked at some of this stuff already earlier. I think the radiation rows we looked at, but then the wind rows we looked in early videos. Finally, we are here in this in this portion. Actually, this is pretty much it. After that, it's just the extras, which we already covered partly also. Now, the direct sun hours. This is important to understand. 
Uh, and you can, if you hover over here, you can read the description, which is the same, oh, by the way, so I put this here. The description is again, if you go here, hover over the middle, you're gonna have the same description again. A lot of people don't understand where they can find the different description. That's why I give a quick intro on that. So in the middle portion, you always have the description of what this tool does, the general description. And then you have the inputs when you hover these, they also have a description. It's very useful because maybe I'm telling too, too much because if, if you read these things, you actually don't need my tutorials. You just read this and it tells you what you need to input. It also has outputs and they also have a description. So everything is described. There's nothing really super fancy about it, but let's read through this. So we understand what this tool actually does. Calculate the number of hours of direct sunlight received by geometry using sun vectors obtained from the ladybug sun path component. Such direct sun calculations can be used for shadow studies of outdoor environments or can be used to estimate glare potential, potential from direct sun on the indoors. Note that these this component uses the CAD environments ray intersection methods, which can be fast for geometries with low complexity, but does not scale well for complex geometries or many test points. For such complex studies, honeybee radiance should be used. Yeah, you see, do you understand what it says? <laughs> so first of all, this is a, a tool it's ideal for the early stages for massing models simple models without too much detail boxes really uh, or simple shading structures surfaces and so on it's not meant to be a fully developed model and then you do a sun study then it's already too late anyway um, so this is one thing the other thing is that and you will see it later, there is not much input from the actual weather data, actually not really anything except for the location. That And it's actually not here. <laughs> Even there, we actually don't use that. We use vectors from the tool called the sun path. And I will explain it in a, mo in a moment. The sun path just creates vectors from sun position to to the earth or to the uh, the site your location that's that's that these are the vectors and it doesn't take anything else into account and it's also called direct sun hours that means there is no indirect light calculated so there's no skylight calculated with this with this tool it's really about how much sun how much direct sun hits the surface when and where but it's very useful still. It's super useful, especially for landscape architects, especially for early stages. You can figure out quite a lot of stuff. If you need shade, if there's glare, even for I used it for planting plants in the past. So you can do a lot. In traditional um, Philip Galvan design manner, we will start with this tool and we work ourselves back backwards. So we need vectors. How do we get vectors? Now, if we read, then we already know what we have to do. The sun vectors from the ladybug sun path component. That's what we need. This is this tool here, so the ladybug sun path. The ladybug sun path has other inputs. Now these inputs become more, but fear not, it's not that complicated. So first of all, the north we don't need because our model is northed. If you need, if your model is not um, facing the correct north as mine does then you need to provide the direction of north for example like this that is your north vector and you can take this and input it here and then it has the correct north it needs the location all right the location this is the only thing we actually need from the sun from the weather data don't really need anything from the weather data by the way if you don't know how to get this 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 tool here and how do you get all the information into here then please please go back into the playlist and watch from the beginning i will not explain it it's all explained in the previous videos so this tool actually already st starting to provide something it seems actually no there's no vectors in here but it it's 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 ran and it, there's no errors so no errors here in the report so in theory could put this in here although we don't have vectors this will not run anyway but that's what we need to provide here. So let's work on the vectors. Let's work on that. <coughs> the ladybug sun path is 
a three-dimensional diagram which shows uh, the sky as a hemisphere and it shows um, how how the the sun moves with these you can see it here throughout the months this the middle line would be the equator so the next input here it says it's not it's not uh, mandatory but other, without this tool nothing works this is called the hours of the year and you could provide an hour one hour of the year for example by just placing a ladybug calculate hour of the year gives me one day one hour of the year or one day of the year and the date now we could input here um, 12 a slider from 1 to 12 representing the months a slider from 1 to 31 representing the day and the hour this gives me a very specific hour of the year actually the first hour of the year because it's january day one first hour oh by the way the hours go from 0 to 23 so we have to change that so the first hour is actually the hour from 0 to 1 and it's the zero hour midnight new year <laughs> and i can put this in here and at the moment we don't see anything because it's not it's basically on the other side of 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 the planet sun the sun is on the other side so if we change this then actually we see this here this uh, thing moving around and to make this more uh, pleasing to look at we can actually put here the preview visual set visual set and we are gonna hide this preview means it still runs but it's it's just not showing otherwise i would see everything double and now i have a much nicer representation of that and actually have a, a real sun here so that gives me one one hour of the year and you can see how it moves so if i change the month it moves in this direction if i change the day it moves slower and if i you the hour moves it in this this direction here all right so this is our hour of the year setup and this already now creates a vector it creates one vector so i can visualize this by having here the anchor point which is the, the position of the sun of the sun and then the direction of the vector before we do that we will discuss the other things here i want to put this on a center point now i can just provide here a point container but actually no we will do this differently this time because we want to relate this to the middle of this plot i will do this in a different way so we use our we place here a surface a surface container so surface container there's no surface in there and we will look at um let's i, I made one flat surface i will explain it later but we can use this and we place it in our surface container here now this is partly hidden which is a a shame but what i want to show you is that i can get the middle point of that surface by using a area calculation we anyway need the area calculation later it's good to know and this gives me a centroid which i can use as a, as my as my point for the, the the center point for this diagram here so i can took i can take this and place it here and now my sun path diagram is set to that center point now this is for me is not enough i want to i want to add a bit more functionality here so what i will do is instead of placing this directly in here i will use a move function move it's here in transform and i use the geometry the point and the output is a point again so i can place this in here so now until now nothing has changed but i can i want to change where it sits in the elevation so it's not um covered by anything actually it doesn't it's not covered really yet anyway and it already moved uh, by 10 meters because this is the default so in here there's a vector where you can see zero zero ten means zero in the x direction zero in the y direction and ten there's another way to do that you can just provide a set unit and a slider and that i can also um i can also modify here the the, the height and i will hide this i will just hide it i will not turn it off i will just turn off the preview it's something a lot of people don't understand so in the, i i'm getting i can see it clearer and clearer what the, which things are not which what is not clear and what is clear and let's clean this up a bit more so we have the sun position and we have a center point and we have in here a vector so we could display the vector by 
providing this this point here, the, the center point. No, sorry, the 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 sun position and the vector. Now, problem is that um, so so now we need to understand the output here. So the vectors, we have the altitude, azimuth, the hour of the years. This is the same as the input, and then we have the sun point. This is actually the anchor point of that vector. So we can put this in here and then we can put the vector in here. And now we can see the direction of the sunlight. Um, I want to use a different one here. Display. This is better. I can, I can play a bit more. Start point of vector. Vector. And we could, if we want, we can also change the amplitude. So I could take this and put a factor here. So we can make it longer, bigger. So this is a vector. This is my vector from here down into the center. Now with this, with one vector, we can't really do much. And let's see what it actually gives us. What else do we need here? By timestamp, we can change how many steps are within one hour. You can play with that yourself. Uh, the geometry, this is the geometry we want to test. So this is the, this is the test surface. That's what we want to test. I can just provide here a surface or better even for this because we might have lots of different geometry to test i can just put the geometry and that's our geometry that we want to test i can put this in here and i can create another one another container which is the is the context this is like building shading structures trees even and that for example in that case my my massing here there's an old building here we might not show that but this is the geometry let's do it without first so you get a better understanding. The, uh, we need to provide a grid size. The grid size is on how many test points are in which distance. And the grid size basically is in meter or the, the, the unit you're working in. And I can put here, maybe let's go for half a meter, half a meter. So it doesn't calculate like crazy. And um, there are other things. Offset distance is the distance and how much it's offsets from the ground. It's the default is 10 centimeters. We can just leave that. The legend parameters. We, dis we, we discussed legend parameters quite a lot. Should know by now what it does. You can also specify how many uh, CPUs are used for the calculation. If it's not specified, it will automatically use all the CPUs except one. So the computer can do other things. We need then to set the run, but the run um, by by a toggle. And now if this turned gray, gray, it's always good when it's gray. When it's when it's orange, it's just not complete, and when it's red, there's a there's a mistake. But it hasn't run yet. There is enough no outputs, no outputs here, nothing. So we can run that, and now we see oh, it's all blue, and then this where most people give up. Okay, so this is this is my surface I want to test. And now everything's blue and it says zero hours. It's very strange. Now this is because the orientation of that is wrong. You can see if I if I change the if I change the orientation of the surface, I flip it, it's still blue, but it says now one hour. <laughs> the problem is that we only have one vector. We only have one vector. So in order to actually understand a bit more, we need to provide more vectors, more actually more hours of the sun of the year so currently we're providing one vector and we haven't yet included any uh, structures which we could maybe we should do, try that first so i'll go here and no 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 I'll, I'll do that later so we have one hour we have one hour here because we have one vector so in order, in order to measure a period we actually need to provide more of this hour of the year i just get rid of this and we will re built this as a period. So I place here the start month, the start day, the start hour, and I can just copy this. End month, maybe I just use one month for now, so it's easy to calculate. End day, maybe a different day, maybe we measure one month, and the start hour is zero, and the end hour is 23. Now I have a period of one month, the 1st of June to the 30th of June, and then this is reflected in the hours of the year. Starting from 3624, this is the first hour in June, to, to the hour 4343, it's the last hour in June. And of course, you can play with your start date, start month, start hour, and so on. If I place this in here now, you'll see, oh, this is quite different. It's a quite different chart now. Actually, I want to hide this so it's easier. So 
now we see okay there's there's a distribution of hours and we could go even further here let's maybe change this to start month one like the first of the january start month january okay so this looks quite good, different but as you can see there's not so much difference in the in the hours in the, in the amount of hours so on the yellow bit because it's on the top of the hill there's the most sunlight with 2178 direct sun hours direct sun hours and in the blue bits is 2666 hours this is from january to end of june all the hours are calculated together and that's basically it now the geometry the context the context is all uh, shading trees buildings and context don't need they can be also the geometry we test what i'm saying by this is we can have the geometry as a context or we can have the geometry as a context and the geometry we want to test so to demonstrate that i can just place here multiple geometries and I just select these sheds here and also this one now if i put this in here it will rerun and changes drastically because now we have now the slope of the hill is not the significant change now it's actually the buildings because they create shade in the middle between and on the side and that's these are the these are the areas where there's the least sunlight no so we could change the grid size now to let's say 0.2 and now it will run quite a while okay now you see it took much longer is because the resolution is much much smaller so it needs to calculate for each of these small little um, pixels it needs to calculate the whole year how many hours per year per how many hours in the year hits this surface so that's why it's it's quite um, a tricky thing to calculate nevertheless the the geometry itself can be also the geometry we want to test at the same time it can be context it can be shading and uh, geometry we test Let, i will go back here to a more moderate grid size because otherwise it's, everything would take so long so we'll just work with this and then just for the final image we will choose a smaller uh, grid size so we can put this in here and you'll see what happens now these shapes also got a, a, a painting the buildings receive the most sunlight on the top and less on the side and then there's some areas where even less sunlight will hit that's basically it now i want to talk a bit very quickly about the design and how we move forward because i think i owe you a bit uh, some explanation of the thinking just for you to understand a bit what i'm aiming for because i really want this to work and i will spend a bit more time probably before the next session to fix this a bit better but I, there are some requirements for this space so we know we just saw before that it, this is the area is roughly 3872 so that's that's the area and based on the requirements because this is space going to be owned by women every woman needs roughly 1000 square meters so that's it's around 4000 almost 4000 so I would say this is basis for four women now there's a requirement for livestock areas 600 square meter household garden 800 square meter this is just to run you know to to live you know grow some veggies and stuff and then there is other areas for buildings kids area kitchen area office toilets um, living indoor sleeping rooms equipment so that's what i it's a very rough number but we need some number in order to actually get somewhere we can then always argue do we really need a kitchen with 25 square meter i don't know and um, it seems right given that this all this space is going to be a production space and people and during harvesting there will be more people on site than just the four women there are other areas um, required for bees. Is twenty is fifteen square meter enough? I'm not sure. Probably if it's only for pollinating. But if you want honey and you want to sell honey, then this might not be enough. Water harvesting is also the question. If it's is this what harvesting is meant? Is it a pond? Is it are these like several ponds or is it an underground uh, storage? You know, so things to this to think about. Composting meeting spaces outdoor 
paths around for the square meter not sure if that is correct if this really works biogas plant nursery beds for you know growing growing the stuff and then a kids outdoor area uh, so i this is what i assumed roughly it's like a real massing exercise and i put this on the side and play with it that's why my model looks at it looks like at the moment and i will play more but i will not show you the hours and hours i'm gonna put in there just to wiggle these things around and just move them around but it's really just about getting a very early idea in place it's just just something where you can talk about there's some thinking i might so my early thinking and this will change for sure is that i want to have a courtyard i feel like a meeting space outside should be a space where it's kind of sheltered from from the sides but maybe it's open to the street and maybe it's open to the back i'm not sure yet but we need an office the office should be close to the street maybe close to the parking space there should be sleep a living area i don't want to have the office ne right next to the living area i think it's better to have that offset now currently it doesn't make sense with the kids area and so on the sleeping area i don't want to have too close to the kitchen and to the working space um yes the office hmm. yeah it's not it's it's actually quite difficult and then we need some equipment the equipment needs to be close or some somehow central you know is it central is it is it here you know i i'm not sure um a kitchen the kitchen should be close to the house or garden it should be also close to the composting and to the guy biogas probably also there nah nursery maybe not the nursery might be better here closer to the equipment you know there's a lot of things to think about toilets are we re reusing the waste from the toilet then it should be close to the composting but maybe it needs a separate um a more spe a special treatment it's a lot a lot to think about but so you just get an understanding of why my model looked as it looked like and i will probably now before we have our next session i will uh, sketch over this whole thing and think a bit more and then we might do some area testing and so on won't be really part of the um, ladybug tools series but i just want to mention that this is kind of this is somehow the thinking in the background and again there are some areas we might might not really might, it's might, might not relevant but uh, I think it's a good thing to mention and uh, probably some f design thinking will come out of that for sure. Okay, let's um, go back here. Let's turn everything on, turn the massing off, not what I wanted. This is the old, by the way, this is the old massing here and I'm going to turn this off. And now I want to run this again once more just to have it a bit nicer. Let's say 0.3 yeah you have to live with this here i think that's it um there's not mu not mu not much else to say about this for now in the next video oh yes so i want to give a recap now for this because i think uh, it's good to to recap i normally don't do that but i feel like i should do it more often very quickly so we're loading the weather data via our um weather data url weather url and then we have our output, the E plus weather file. Put this in here. It was modified to fit um, our current site better, which happened here. And this is the new weather data. It's the same stuff. It's the same outputs. So you can use just the normal weather data. You don't need the steps in between. It just you, you would not need this if, if not necessary. And then here we building a period tool where we can. Uh, generate the period in that case we don't use the period output we use the hours of of the year output this is just um, a method of changing the the position of our um, sun path this is the sun path a tool that creates vectors this vectors goes into the direct sun hours tool the vectors basically the position from the sun to the ground uh, we put in the geometry we need to test we also put in the context the buildings and we also use that as geometry so we can test them at the same time and then we have a grid size and the button to just turn on and off so this this is the sun hour analysis and it's actually super simple so if you want you can you know take a screenshot of this and work it out all right i hope you like this video subscribe join as a member if you want if you want to support the channel 
I'm always up for it. And um, yeah, see you in the next video. Ciao.